Okay, we're going to take this whole backup thing just a little bit further and more or less show you what's the start of what's going to be possible with this. Uh, just having a regular backup command like this one here is fine and dandy uh, for those uh, little quick one-offs when your developer calls you and says, you know, I need a backup of this database real quick before I make this, you know, update statement or something like that. But in a real production environment, it's kind of bullshit because nobody's going to sit here and back up all of their databases like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and I'll paste it into another line there. Now, this is going to be kind of a two-in-one lesson. I, I, I really kind of want to get started on procedures, so I'm going to kind of do it in a useful way, hopefully a useful way. So we've got this backup command, and we've already seen what it can do. It's, it's pretty easy. Now, assuming that you didn't want to type all of this every single time, or that you never remember the name of this location every single time, but yet your developer calls you all the time and wants, you know, four or five times a day and wants you to restore that database. Let's, let's put it in that context right now. Uh, you're you're going to want to, you know, you can do two things. You, you can actually do a number of things. Uh, first of all, you could just save this script and you could open up this script every single time and then run it. That's certainly one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to parameterize it. Um, and the way you're going to do that is you're going to first declare a variable. All variables in SQL start with the at sign, and then I need to give it a uh, I need to give it a data type. Since I don't know how long it's going to be, I'll go ahead and give it a varchar 100. Um, uh, if you're really really new to SQL, varchar is a variable character. It's gonna it's gonna cut off the trailing characters at the end. So if I've got a varchar 100, and I've only got a five character name then my data field is going to be five characters. If I used a regular character then it would pad the uh, the other 95 characters and you'd have this big long string of, of empty nothing and you can't do that so anyway okay so we've got a we've got a variable declared now I need to set the variable to something name equals, I'm going to make it a string, in this case, IT Bookworm Restore. So now I can double click on this guy. <clears throat> now I've got a, a simple block of code that what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to replace this with anything I want and it will take it'll set it to this parameter and then it will back up that database in that parameter and it's really a pretty simple script you see that's gonna run and I can overwrite that pretty easily oh what's another one over here uh, I can do it that way okay now the only problem is is now I've got the IT, I've got the house rest back up in the IT bookworm files, but that's okay. Um, this is just the start of a process that I'm teaching you here. Okay, so this in itself, again, could be saved as a script, but it's not really, it's not really that useful itself yet either, because what we've got here is something that you still have to open up every single time and you have to change it manually. It really doesn't do you that much good. What you could do is you could store it in the database as a procedure, oddly enough, called the stored procedure. And what that is is that's a pre-compiled block of SQL code that gets run every single time you type in the procedure name. So here we'll say create procedure. You have to give it a name. We'll call it backup IT for IT Bookworm as, and then you declare your variable, you set your variable, and you run your backup. And it's just that simple. I'll hit F5, and we've just stored that in master up here. So now if I actually want to run this backup, all I have to do is call the procedure name, and it'll run that backup. 
So that in itself is getting a little bit more useful because now when the developers call me, I don't have to write out all this code and I don't have to, to bring up this code. All I have to do is type backup IT and it goes. I mean, I, I highlighted it here, but you know, I would ordinarily, if I hit control in, I'll bring up another window, backup IT, and I get the exact same thing. And it's not case sensitive. That's the same thing as that. So back up it. Um, I guess back it up is probably a little bit more grammatical, but you know, since it's IT. Okay, <clears throat> so we have our procedure here. And that's a little bit more useful than the other one. That's not too bad. But still not fabulous. I mean, what if you want to change databases every time? So you want to use the same procedure to back up several different databases. That can still be done. You just need to add an input parameter. So we're going to say here, O at um, DB input name. I still want it to be uh, 100 characters. Now instead of this declare, I'm going to do this one here. I'll go ahead and just comment those out. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself to change this on the fly I'm uh, when I call it. So since uh, the procedure already exists, I have to do an alter. For those of you that know something about Oracle, that is one thing I do like about Oracle better is it'll say, you know, create or alter procedure and SQL doesn't, but oh well. Okay, so we've got that, and now you're going to see that when I run backup IT, it's going to fail because it expects the it expects the parameter DB input name or DB in name. So I have to call it with um, have to call it with the parameter that I told it I expected it. And, oh, IT bookworm. Okay. There we go. That one will run. And so it's going to automatically back up whatever database. I put into it. And it's just that simple. So for right now, we still have the exact same problem we had before, though. Inside our procedure, <coughs> we're still backing up the different databases to the exact same batch file, or to the exact same back file, sorry the exact same back file. So we're just overwriting that file every single time. That's no good. So what we need to do is we need to parameterize this again to allow for this guy right here. Okay, sorry about that. I got called away for a minute. Uh, let's see, where were we? Um, Oh yeah, we were about to make this a little bit more useful. Okay, okay, I see where we are. All right, so the problem that we have now is we have this parameter that's being passed in, or this this value that's being passed into this parameter, and that should be here, shouldn't it? Okay, and what we want to do is make this a little bit more useful that's not going to work. Okay, so we've got this guy right here, backup database, uh, whatever we pass in to this location and this file name. Well, for reasons I've already discussed, that's not going to work. So we need to pass in another variable. Just put a comma and we'll call it file name, oddly enough. Varkar 100. It's a good round number. Um, <clears throat> and all of this white space doesn't matter. You could put all this stuff on, you could put this stuff a thousand lines down and, you know, end in it, uh, end in it 40 spaces. It doesn't really matter. So white space is pretty well ignored for the most part. Okay. 
So with that in mind, we've got our file name. Now we need to build a string. Um, unfortunately, uh, well, let me let me show you a couple ways we could do this. Let's go ahead and take this out of timeout. Okay, so we have DB name. We'll call that 200 just in case. And let's call it a little something, a little bit better. We'll call it full file name. We'll set full file name equal to this guy right here. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. That plus the file name that we pass in. I see. Hold on. So I want to do it. Control C. Control D. Okay, there we go. And then we've got this guy right here. We'll get rid of, and we'll pass that the full file name now. Okay. <clears throat> Our little procedure here is complete. Uh, we're passing in two file names, or passing in two parameters. First, we got the name of the database to back up and the name of the file name that it's going to go with so that we're not overwriting the same file every single time. Uh, we, do, we put those at the beginning before the as statement. That's going to mean that they're input parameters and they're required. Um, then we say as, and then we start declaring our, our variables and making our queries. So then we declared a full file name so that we could hold both the the uh, the standard string and the dynamic string that we put in there, a constant string, that's the word I'm looking for. And then we, we back up database with the uh, dbn name right here, and then two disk equals, and then the full concatenated name right here. And what that's going to do is that's just going to, here, I'll show you a little print statement. Do I still have that? Good. So we'll print this on the other line at the same time. This ought to compile just fine. There we go. Compile it just fine. Now again, if I want to run this guy, I need two parameters. This is going to fail. So I need two parameters. You can separate those with commas. And since I've already got, if you notice, since I've already got the path here, because I want all these databases to be backed up to the same path, I just want them to have different file names. So since I've already got the path here, all I have to do is supply the file name. And that file name is going to be hasres.back. Now that ought to run just fine, and it did. <clears throat> so there's actually a different way you could do that, and I'm going to explore a few possibilities with you here, just so just so that you kind of get a full understanding of that. You notice how here I, if I've got something this simple, then it's really easy. All I have to do is pass in one variable. So let me show you. I will get rid of this. I'll go ahead and comment that out right now. I'll go back to one variable. I'm only going to pass in uh, the database name. And then here, I'm going to build a string uh, that says uh, in file name plus dot back. So it's the same thing I did before. I've got this, and I've got house rest, and then I've got dot back, only this time I'm just passing it in as this variable instead. Everything else should stay the same. This should compile. And then I can go back to running it with a single parameter again. Now I'm right back where I started. Okay, so good stuff that. Now, there's you can you can even get a little bit more complicated. Let's say that I want to keep 
several versions of this file on hand at the same time. Well, I can do the same thing I did here. I don't really have to change it as much. Um, yeah, I really don't have to change this much. Uh, let's see, I've got that. And I can just add a simple uh, get date on there. Only it's not quite that simple. Uh, this get date's going to need to be formatted because it's got a lot of extra stuff in there. So we'll do convert convert it to var car. I'll say 15 off the top of my head. Comma. I need to format it as something. What's a formatting code I could use for this? Is it 12 or 14? Yeah, let's go with uh, 112, I think, ought to do it. And I think I can get a little bit more room here. Let's see. Convert that to that. That ought to do. Okay, it compiled at the very least. And we're still printing. So let's go ahead and run this guy right here and see what happens. Backed up. Oh, look, and there we go. We got 2008-0320.back. So we've got it dated by the day, and that's good. Um, now, you can do all kinds of things with this. I mean, you know, convert and get date. You know, the, the date function has a lot of has a lot of sub functions you can do. Year, uh, day, month, you know, second, you can do time, uh, you can do different formats of those, and they, they get a little bit more complicated as, as time goes on. See if this is getting a little bit long, then I can just drop this down here. <clears throat> and in some of these you may need to replace characters with, uh, you know, you may need to replace a colon with you know, take a colon out or take a space out or take a colon and a space out or take, you know, slashes out or, you know, however, however the, the date gets formatted when you, when you bring it up, you're going to need to format it the way you want it. But this is a nice basic way. I think I still have that. There we go. But this right here, that's, that's where you're backing up to. This is a nice way to, uh, just a real simple way to just throw a, a, a real simple backup routine for a simple single database. Hey, maybe you even uh, give the developers rights to run this and pass in the database name. So you can still control when the database gets backed up. You can, I mean, you can still control where the database gets backed up and what the format of the files is so you can script the restore much easier if the if the database files, if the backup files are in a solid format every single time, you can script that restore with no problem. And you can you can do all kinds of things that we're going to talk about in, in, in later videos. But uh, you can put this in the hands of the developers. You could put this as a button on a web page. You could put it as a, as a button in a VB program. You can do anything you want. They can call it from other procedures to make sure that, uh, you know, they can put it in their update scripts so that... Um, so that it gets backed up the way you as the DBA want it to be backed up before they do their update statements. So that's the basics of stored procedures. Um, we did, uh, uh, we learned how to declare variables. We learned how to, how to do input parameters. We learned how to print so we can see, you know, so we can get statements back on what we're actually doing. And we learned how to make a, a, a pretty decent little backup routine here that backs up a single database for specialized purposes so you don't have to keep writing the statements again and again and again and it gives you a nice standardized format so you always know what you're looking for and you always know where. Um, I hope this does somebody some good and uh, we're going to keep plugging away at backups uh, probably basically until I get tired of it.